Harley Benton is the moped of guitars. Yeah, it'll get you there, but you wouldn't want anyone to see you riding it. Let me add, yeah, you wouldn't want anyone to see you riding it, only if you're pathetically insecure. At this point, I just want to watch Glenn review every Harley Benton guitar just because it's funny watching the comments. Yeah, I always love seeing people get upset over this guitar that costs like $260 and plays great and looks great and sounds great and... Yeah, stays in tune and no flaws in the finish. Tell me again why the SG that you spent thousands for is better. Oh, 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 I know. It's because it uses special tone woods. You should play authentic, Glenn. Yeah, I did try that. And for my efforts, all I got was my bank account authentically emptied. What would be a good all-purpose head for metal? I understand that cabs speakers are the actual sound deciders. If someone's going to buy multiple cabs with only one head, which one works across multiple flavors of metal? Rev Generator 100 Mark III, which is normally back here, but I had an issue with it and Rev's taking care of it. Hopefully it'll be back here in a few days. Uh, love that amp to death. It just works great on everything. Not cheap, but well worth the investment and you know, will probably last you the rest of your life. And the great thing is Rev stands behind their product. Glenn! I volunteered at a Leonard Skinner concert in Niagara Falls on Saturday. We gave away an Epiphone signed by the band and I cannot tell you how many people were annoyed that it was not a Gibson. It was like, come on, dude, I played some crapsy Gibsons, but they would not budge. It is freaking signed by Leonard Skinner. You're not going to play it anyway, you idiot. Great video, Glenn. Thank you. Oh, yeah, the no good deed goes unpunished. Here, here's a free signed guitar from the band. It's not a Gibson. I don't know, maybe they're trying to offer the fans a quality instrument. Just a thought, anyway. All right, guys, once again, this episode is brought to you by me in conjunction with Rev Amps. Uh, we got the brand new Northern Mauler pedal up for grabs here. It is uh, done by myself, it's done by Rev, and it sounds just like this. This combines the elements of the G3 and G4 distortion pedal with elements of the Swedish chainsaw and you can parallel mix these between each other so you can get a nice modern sound and just grit it up a little bit or you can get that horrible that just works so well on death metal guitars and then bring a little bit of modern sensibility into it. I love blended tones and this does it all in one pedal. Links for everything are in the description below. It is on sale now. Grab it. Hey, Glenn, I have a question. If I were to buy a relatively affordable guitar, 200 to $250, puts expensive high-end pickups in it, would it be worth it? It's better to straight up buying an expensive guitar, and if yes, what guitar and pickups would you suggest in general for maximum versatility? Well, I love that Harley Benton double cut. Are expensive pickups going to do you any better in terms of tone? I don't know. I can't honestly give you a straight answer on that. Unless they're like microphonic and, you know, vibrating and, you know, won't let you play rests, I'm sure your pickups are going to be just fine. In my experience, anyway, pickups are going to make a difference in clarity and in cleanliness uh, when they're not being played as opposed to having any major benefits in your overall tone because that's more reliant on the speaker than anything. Uh, you know, you can probably put better tuners on a guitar. That might help the guitar stay in tune that much better, but I'm the jury's still out for me on pickups. I haven't got that cream tea guitar yet uh, with the swappable pickups. Now that guitar should give us a really good idea of how much of a difference pickups are making when it comes to high gain tones. I know it's been referenced before. A few people have done shootouts with high gain and the differences between pickups is pretty minimal. So don't get all caught up on the pickups thing. If they're doing the job well, they're probably fine. As long as they give you the output you're looking for, that is. Now it's time for the butthurt of the week. in this video comparing two electric Les Pauls acoustically. Two of the same woods sounding completely different. Put on some headphones. This proves Glenn's crusade is frivolous to say the least. Ask your favorite guitar player. Not Glenn, who has spent, not spent serious time with an instrument to know them intimately. Chris! Dude! Seriously, I hope you get well. I didn't know somebody dropped a rock on your fucking head, because apparently it's made your IQ plummet several million points. Fuck. You, you compared the two Les Pauls acoustically? They're not acoustic instruments, you stupid shit! You plug them in, they're going to sound the same. It is the fucking speaker that affects the tone in electric guitar, not the fucking wood. Please, if you don't want to take my word for it, please go watch Jim Lil's video where he takes a Telecaster and puts it up against this monstrosity he put together where he strung the guitar across two tables and played it without a body. They sounded the same. Don't throw your money away on expensive wood when you don't fucking need to. Aesthetics, yes, sure, wood can be beautiful. That's fine. But when it comes to getting actual sonic benefits, no. It's absolute marketing bullshit. Don't be an idiot and don't fall for it. 
Nothing worse than old guys who don't grow up. Oh, I can think of a few things like people who did grow up. Yeah, they're a lot of fun, aren't they? You should play more often. The list of guys who made the big time who only play half as good wouldn't fit in this comment. In short, well done. Oh, thanks, dude. I really appreciate it. You know, I've been practicing quite a bit on the instrument. I've still got a very long way to go. But, you know, I am starting to get my technique down a little bit better. And, yeah, honestly, the main reason I got better on guitar is just so I could make content that much quicker, quicker and I don't have to farm out the guitar playing on the show. You know, the, the whole goal there is just to free up some spare time for myself. Ulterior motive? Yeah, probably. But then again, I'd like to spend some, uh, some more time with my wife and not uh, rely on other people's schedules to get this show done. Do shut the fuck up. Maybe my new go-to phrase. We need it on billboards. In fact, I may run for president on the campaign promise of do shut the fuck up. <laughs> Might be good on a t-shirt. I don't know. What do you guys think? Forget guitar practice tips. What's your breath control regimen? Uh, that's actually pretty simple. It's a little tip I picked up from Melissa Cross. Don't fill your lungs up all the way. You know, she explained it like this. You don't see accordion players, you know, opening and closing the accordion all the way, smashing it open, smashing it closed. No, they fill the tank and work off the top. And that's why you can do this. You know, you work with your lower diaphragm and whatnot, open things up a little bit, and you just go, hey! Just like that, you can really sustain out the notes. You don't see me go <gasps> like this because your body is going to be in a rush to get rid of that breath. So, yeah, that's a little something um, I picked up from Melissa Cross. Uh, we've also got uh, Ty Christian's uh, brand new vocal course up for grabs over on Spectre Digital. Definitely worth checking out. He's the vocalist for Lords of the Trident. Got a hell of a set of pipes, and he not only shows you how to sing better, he also teaches you how to work on stage. Really cool shit. Definitely worth taking a look at, especially if you want to learn how to sing. I need more information on what to charge. What if you're not comfortable with your ability? What if you're concerned with your gear isn't the best? Should you still charge if you don't know you can record and mix a decent sound but concerned you suck at mastering? Should you choose smaller projects such as guitar and vocals? Fuck, Glenn, can you please break it down in more detail based on skill, equipment, and for fuck's sake, confidence? If you're just starting out, what's too much and what's too little? Take the money in advance or after the job's done. Too many damn questions, not enough answers. Well, I can, for one, can definitely tell you I charged way too little when I was first starting out. Even though I didn't have the confidence level, it was like, yeah, the I charged flat rates and the bands completely took me for a ride. So whatever you do, don't charge flat rates. Charge an hourly rate, otherwise bands will fuck with you. That is an absolute fucking ironclad guarantee that bands will waste your time. As for what to charge, that's going to be, uh, you know, what the market can take versus how you feel about your skills. Do you like the sounds coming out of your speakers? Then charge for it. You know, don't sell yourself too short. The great thing is you can always come down in price if nobody comes into your studio. But then again, if you thought you're going to make money running a home studio, <laughs> yeah, good luck with that, buddy. Why are you shouting for it? Do you think it makes your point even more so if you shout out? That's not a normal behavior. Oh, Behavioral Sciences with Jeff Allen. Please, Jeff, tell us some more about what makes normal behavior. You know what's interesting about being normal? It makes you fucking mediocre. One man's heaven is another man's hell. The reality is speakers and cabs can only be judged against amps. Soldado products never use V30s, and Bogdan products always use V30s. Cabs come up compliment amps, and that's the only they can be judged. Christopher, congratulations. That is the dumbest comment of the week. Wow, you can only compare the amp to the cab. Where the fuck did that come from? Can somebody please explain to me where that notion comes from? I don't fucking get that at all. You plug an amp into a cab. How does it sound? It either sounds good or it does not sound good. Back on the Shitfield cab, yes, those speakers sounded terrible. Doesn't matter what amp you plugged it into, it's going to sound like shit. Here's a, here's a hint, okay? Vintage greenbacks sound amazing. Vintage black bands sound amazing too. No matter what amp you throw in, because guess what? All tube amps are all variations on the theme, you stupid shit. Again, we go back to Jim Lil's video, where sound comes from in an amp. It really comes down to where the EQ and the gain are placed in the circuit of an amp. That's all there is to it. The actual voicing of any kind of amp is all down to the speaker for the 80 millionth time. And yes, the Shetfields were fucking terrible. This is why you don't let a guy with hearing problems design your speaker for you. With all due respect to Eddie Van Halen, brilliant player, but man, those shit fields were just fucking garbage. Hi Glenn, I want to ask your opinion about the conversion of this unit. Do you think it'd be comparable with an Apollo's interface or converters? I'm currently looking for a good DA convert with monitoring, speaker outs, and headphones. Extra mic priest is okay to have just in case, but yeah, mostly concerned is the AD DA. Thanks, rock on. Well, if your only concern is the analog to digital conversion, dude, even a low end barrister is going to be fucking great for you. Seriously, converters are great these days. It doesn't matter if you spend a lot of money or a little bit of money because they're all using the same fucking chips. 
Seriously. Oh, but the analog topology, fuck that shit. You're talking about 0.00003 fucking percentage of total harmonic distortion ship. That's it. Very, very little is going on. So don't get freaked out about AD conversion. Guess what? The technology is mature. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get good sound. That being said, uh, the Neve guys reached out to me the other day and they actually fixed the DI on it and they're going to send me a new version of it. So, hey, hats off to the guys at Neve for listening to criticism and uh, building a better fucking product. Good for them. Is it going to be great? Yes. Does it do the Neve saturated preamp thing? Yes. If that's what you're after. Fuck. It's going to be great. But converters, seriously, dude, <laughs> stop worrying about that shit. You know, you always see guys on forums go on and on and on and on and on endlessly about converters with no actual verifiable evidence to back up any of their fucking claims. And the one time they did a converter shootout over on Gear Sluts, you know what one? The Behringer ADA 8000, a $200 converter. Results don't fucking lie. I love how you can be honest, even a fan of Neve, respects to you, sir. Ah, you're referencing the 88M review I did there a couple weeks ago. Yeah, great fucking unit. DI was too fucking hot for modern high gain pickups. And uh, once again, yeah, they fixed it. I'm getting one in the next couple weeks. Should be fucking cool. Really looking forward to it. And kudos to Neve for stepping up. Here's the thing. I don't owe these companies anything. I really don't. If they want to send me gear, that's absolutely fine, but I'm going to treat them just the same as I treat anyone else. If there's, uh, if they're good, I'm going to say it's good. If it's got issues, I'm going to explain to you guys what the issues are and what to watch out for, because ultimately I answer to you guys, not to the companies. And for that, I am absolutely grateful to all you guys for the support and I'll keep uh, holding companies feet to the flame and keeping them honest as long as I can anyway. Okay, everybody, that's it for this episode. Yeah, once again, make sure you check out the Northern Mauler. This is the heaviest distortion pedal you're ever going to come across. This thing just does so many cool things. Definitely worth checking out. And uh, if you want to know what that's all about, make sure you check out the video on it right here.